A seven-year, billion-dollar space mission to bring asteroid samples back to Earth is nearing its end. A NASA capsule is due to land back in the U.S. in a few hours, carrying rock and dust from an asteroid called Bennu. Scientists hope it will offer a glimpse into our solar system's earliest history. This asteroid may be tens of millions of kilometers from Earth, but now a little bit of Bennu is coming much, much closer. It's the end of a seven-year quest for NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission that blasted off in 2016. That craft spent two years traveling to the 500-meter-wide space rock and then another two scouting the best place to grab a sample. Finally, in October 2020, it darted in with its probe, touching Bennu for just a few seconds and blasting it with compressed nitrogen to gather its payload, a sample of rock and dust. It spent the last three years bringing this precious cargo back home. Scientists hope the 4.5 billion year old rocks will offer a window into the origins of life on Earth. We'll be looking for organics, amino acids, the building blocks of life, as well as evidence that there was hydration in the past on Bennu's surface, because all of these things are the sort of materials that were delivered to Earth that helped life flourish here. Now the spacecraft has released the sample capsule far above the Earth. It's currently plummeting down to the surface where it'll touch down in the Utah desert. We're releasing the capsule 100,000 kilometers away from the Earth, about a third of the way to the moon, and it has to hit a, a, a corridor in the atmosphere that's just about three miles wide. So that's like kicking like a 120,000 yard foot, foot uh, field goal on a football field or something like that. On the ground, scientists will be waiting to rush the sample to a special clean room lab like this one for further study. While the space rubble should provide insights into how life began, the mission could help ensure it continues as well. NASA ranks Bennu as the solar system's most dangerous asteroid for its potential to someday hit Earth in the coming centuries. Just knowing more about what it's made of could improve our chances of fending Bennu and other incoming space rocks off. For more, let's welcome Patrick Michel in Nice. He's a planetary scientist and member of the OSIRIS-REx team. Patrick, as part of the team, I imagine you've been living this mission almost every moment of the waking day, and it's in your dreams at night. A big day for you? Absolutely. Hello. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. We worked uh, decades for this to happen. So, of course, we are super excited. This is why we are doing this kind of, of work. And really, I, I, the young generation should really envy us and try to do this kind of job because this is amazing. It's extraordinary. You know, just moments ago, I was talking to my producer about this, and he said 20 years ago, this would, would have been the stuff of Hollywood, but this is actually happening in real life. When you're dealing with the extraterrestrial, no amount of planning can account for everything. What so far has been the most challenging part of this mission? Well, there are two things. The first is that when we arrived at the asteroid Bennu, we didn't expect so many rocks on the surface. And therefore, the accuracy of navigation to land on it in order to take a sample had to be entirely revised because the accuracy was too low compared to the amount of boulders. We needed to find a place which was very narrow on the asteroid, which is 300 million kilometers away. So that was the first challenge, is for the operation team to revise all the assumptions that we gave them and to uh, be able to uh, find a strategy that allows landing on such a very small area. And then the sampling itself is al always a challenging operation because it's all autonomous, you are very far away, and the spacecraft has to have the ability to identify dangerous zones in order to touch the surface. Mm. And in addition, the surface did not have the reaction that we expected. In fact, it didn't have any reaction, like if we entered into a fluid, which was unexpected but positive because that allowed us to get more than we were expecting. Give a regular layman, and by that I mean myself, um, some perspective here. Why is the sample you're collecting so important, and how can it uh, benefit humanity? Okay, so it can benefit 
in, just to answer the fundamental, fundamental question that we all have, where are we coming from, how Earth was formed, how life emerged on Earth. So these are scientific questions, but which have also profound philosophical implications. But more practically, Bennu is one of these potentially threatening asteroids. It has a very low, but not yet zero, impact probability with the Earth in about 200 years. So if really it may happen, it's very important to know what it is made of so that we can design better and more efficient strategy to deflect it. And we have time. So mm. the good news is that now we will understand Bennu. And therefore, if we need to do something, we'll have the knowledge to do it. So this is a really a practical implication. Well, I know it's the stuff of Bond movies, but could this mission bring us closer to actually mining asteroids? Yes, also because, in fact, uh, Bennu is rich in carbon, it is rich in water, and therefore uh, we are trying to save the resources on Earth for us and now launch the minimum in space. And then these bodies like Bennu could serve as gas stations, if you will, in order to go further away. And understanding what it is made of, how we interact with them, how they respond, is fundamental in order to be prepared to use them as resources, which is now science fiction. But eventually, it will have to happen, and I'm pretty confident it will happen. Gas stations. Somehow that makes it incredibly clear to me. Uh, many, many thanks for your time, and particularly your perspective. Patrick Michel in Nice, good luck moving forward. Thank you. Thank you.